The story of Exodus is one of the Bible's most important and well-known stories. How Moses and Aaron are called into Egypt to free the Israelite slaves. It's a story of liberation, a story of God's love and steadfastness for his people, a story about God's anger at how we treat one another. The Exodus story is about God's relentless quest for justice. Moses and Aaron, with God's help, cause as much chaos as the mighty Egyptian empire. That's incredible and should serve as a reminder to us, God doesn't work alone. Yes, God sent plagues and performed miracles, but God used human vessels to carry them out. God's only solo project was creation itself. Since then, God has taken action by calling and equipping people to do God's work. Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh. Moses and Aaron led the Israelites out of Egypt. Mary carried Jesus. Women found the tomb empty. Women and the disciples spread the gospel. Paul built the Gentile church. Humans have created vaccines and antibiotics and other life-preserving drugs and procedures. Humans have fought to end slavery for freedom and for equal rights. As powerful and mighty as God is and always has been, God chooses to enact change by empowering and equipping people to do God's work in the world. God rarely acts alone. You see, we are created in our baptism, called to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. Translation, Christian, Christianity isn't meant to be a spectator sport. At one point in history, when we had a need for better medical care, who stepped in? The church. Churches built hospitals. When we had a need for better education, who stepped in? Again, the church. The churches built schools to provide education for the community. When the homeless population grew, churches built shelters and soup kitchens. But somewhere along the way, the church started focusing less on fulfilling the needs of the community and more on filling pews. Our faith was always meant to be active and engaged in the world, not just personally, but corporately. But I'm not capable of doing anything. I don't know what my gifts are. I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm too busy. I guarantee you Moses and Aaron didn't think they were the right people to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. They had plenty of excuses. In fact, Moses flat out told God, I'm not the guy. But you know what Moses and Aaron did? They led the Israelites out of Egypt. Every great movement, every great achievement, at some point, someone doubted their ability and questioned if they were the right person. Maybe they weren't the right person until God worked through them and equipped them. The reality is thousands of years later, there is still plenty of work to do in the world. People are still in need. Injustice still abounds. We have lots of opportunities to engage our faith and positively impact the world. Food insecurity, homelessness, environmental issues, equality, sex trafficking, just to name a few. The world is still full of pharaohs that enslave society. They just look different today. And God is still calling us to be liberators. Maybe not nationally or globally, but in our own corner of the world. The question is, what are you being called to do? Bible study, prayer, and worship are all spiritual practices that help us get to know the mind and the essence of Christ. But ultimately, doing the work of Christ is what really connects us to our faith. God has given each of us at least one spiritual gift to use in our work with Christ. Discovering your role should be a joyful, invigorating process through which you are able to exercise your gifts in concert with others to the praise and glory of God and the benefit of your neighbor. That's the ultimate goal. But we've got some work to do to get us there. As the body of Christ, we all have spiritual gifts. The challenge is we may not recognize our own gifts. Sometimes our spiritual gifts are connected to our careers, but many times they aren't. So in our group exercises for this week, one of the things we're going to do is have everyone in your group help you determine your spiritual gifts. Sometimes we need the voice of others to point out what we can't see for ourselves. 
Your task will be to take each member of your group and write down what spiritual gifts you see in them. Write down those obvious gifts and gifts that may be less obvious. This is yet another case where the Holy Spirit helps us by having two or more gathered in Christ's name to discern what our own callings and passions are for ministry. Your study guide will have a list and explanation of each of these spiritual gifts for you to go over, meditate on, and think about each person in your group. Once you are able to help each other discern your gifts, we can begin the process of moving toward how the spiritual gifts you have identified can be used.